First, I want, I want to say I am the podiatrist that was invited to a conference on hand surgeons. So I compliment Dr. Eaton for uh, getting us all in the same room. Uh, I can share a lot of this information when I go back to my podiatric world. Uh, it's been extremely informative the last two days. Uh, being invited to such an international uh, group, hearing speakers from across the country. The one thing Charlie didn't tell me is that people are going to put beautiful slides up about the countryside where they come from. I'm from New Jersey. There's so many beautiful things I could have put in the slides, but I didn't know. The other aspect of being in an international conference is you're always picking up accents. Sometimes it's hard to understand the speakers. I was born and raised in New York City. If you can't understand my English, I will try to speak slowly so that you understand every word. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and let's hope this works. And it does, and I have no financial disclosure. It would have been great if I followed the speaker two before, who spoke about Lita House, instead of following Peroni's, because uh, it would have been a great lead-in for my discussion. Basically, I'm going to be talking about an alternative to traditional surgery that's done for plantar fibromas. Uh, it's a very effective procedure, and as you heard with the treatment for radiotherapy, there's very little downside to doing it, and we'll get into that when we get through uh, the different things uh, that I'm going to present. Cryosurgery, basically, uh, is not just used on the foot for plantar fibromas. So some of the slides and some of the information I have is going to be a, just a generalization about this procedure. I particularly use it on neuromas, I use it on plantar fasciitis, I use it on tarsal tunnel. It's really any uh, area that you want to affect the nerve. And the basis that I'm going to give you when I'm giving you statistics is not based on the shrinkage of the, mod of the nodule or anything else, it's based on pain. Because the concept is that people who are walking on these nodules are going to be in pain. It's going to interfere with their lifestyle, it's going to affect what they do. So the concept is, can we get them out of pain? And those are the statistics that I will show you as we get into the speech. What I'm going to try to do is go through all of these points, benefits, history, et cetera, et cetera, and lead down to the summary at the end. <clears throat> First, let's look at the benefits. This is a minimally invasive surgical procedure. It can be performed in an office. You're just basically using a small amount of local anesthesia. It takes a few minutes, basically, to do. Within an hour, you can finish the entire procedure. There are no sutures required. And the amazing part is postoperatively, which I'll get into a little later. There's virtually very little discomfort or pain. The patient walks out of the office after the procedure. Those of you who know anything about traditional plantar fibroma surgery know how painful and how long of an extended postoperative period it en encompasses. And you just heard from the previous speaker, two back, it's unsuccessful. There's at least a 57% failure rate. If you add all the types of surgeries that are done for plantar fibromas, at least 57% fail. And not only do they fail, the condition worsens. And that's something we don't want to do to our patients. I, I know when I went to school, my, the main motto I was taught is do no harm. Make your patients better. At, if nothing else, don't make them worse. And they walk out basically in a sneaker. They don't even need a surgical shoe after the procedure. They only have to keep the bandage dry for 24 hours, and then they can bathe, and they just have a Band-Aid on for seven days. Hippocrates, Hippocrates was the first to really tell us many, many years ago about cold and its applications in medicine. But it was Cooper in 62 who devised the first cryosurgical machine. And it's been used ever since in the allopathic world, and I have a slide about that a little later. Uh, so it's a, there's over a 45-year track record of using this modality. <clears throat> it was Lloyd who, in 76, basically said this is a great modality for pain and stopping pain. And as you can see, it really is being used by pretty much every form of medicine. 
I can even bring up that maybe 15 years ago, my wife had a gynecological procedure done by cryosurgery that was extremely successful. In 2003, Trescott is the one who actually did most of the research and presented this information to the FDA so that in 2003, cryosurgical procedures are now an approved, since for the last seven years, are an approved procedure on the lower extremity. Because of that, the research that I'll show you at the very end, we don't have more than, say, a five-year track record because it's only been in use since 2007. And it really was around 2005 is when I really got into it and started doing a lot of procedures. This is basically what a machine looks like. And basically what happens, you get long-term pain relief uh, when you do this procedure. And that's really the whole idea. When we use the machine, we're actually creating an ice ball that reaches minus 70 degrees centigrade. Uh, basically in the area where we present the probe. Those ice crystals, which is really the point, the, we call it an ice ball, creates a vascular damage. And that's the whole idea of this and how this procedure works. You'll get a severe endoneural edema. The most important part is that the, when the nerve is disrupted, the Wallerian degeneration occurs. <coughs> But the myelin sheath, the perineurium, and the epineurium are left intact. The reason that's so important is that we're not doing damage. I can pretty much tell a patient they're not going to have any long-term motor or sensory deficit. Motor, never. Sensory, sometimes. What happens is that, especially with fibromas, more than any of the other procedures I do, the patient can have numbness extending from the arch to the hallux second toe area. Usually it lasts a few weeks to a month, but it can last anywhere from three to six months. I've only had one patient with all the hundreds or maybe thousands I've done that I actually had to put on a, 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 an anti a neuropathy type medication. Uh, but typically and virtually, I, I tell all my patients, they will have some sensory loss, but it will come back. The key factor and the reason why it's so successful is it's not causing, and if any of you have do anything with nerves, you know the potential of causing um, a stump aroma, an amputation aroma, which will leave the patient in a lot more pain. This never happens with this procedure. And as I said, there's no effect on the motor, uh, the motor nerves. So basically what's happening from that machine I showed you, nitrous oxide is forced through the tube uh, into a probe at a very high pressure. Uh, and it comes out of a tip through the, prior, the cryo probe. Where that gas is uh, coming out through the tip, it creates the ice ball. And you get the gas expanding, a rapid drop in temperature, that's the Joules-Thompson effect. The ice ball forms at the uninsulated end of the probe. The ice ball can range in size depending upon the probe. For an aroma, I'll use a three millimeter probe, which creates about a three, three and a half millimeter ice ball. For fibromas, something larger, plantar fasciitis with a little fascia band, I'll use a 10 millimeter probe and create a 10 millimeter ice ball. I already told you it reaches minus 70 degrees Celsius. No gas is escaping into the soft tissue, so there's no danger in that whole at, uh, area. There's different names for this. I just call it cryosurgery. It sounds easier. Um, the nerve cells are basically destroyed, but it's only the portion of the nerve cell that transmits the signal for pain. I think we've mentioned the Waller Wallerian degeneration already. And you typically do repeated freezes. You have to do at least two freezes in each area. For a fibroma, depending upon the size, I'll do anywhere from four to six freezes in that one fibroma. I just had a patient, actually someone else that uh, was sent to me by Charlie, uh, that I did late earlier in the week. The person had about five different fibromas. I think I did anywhere from 12 to 14 freezes to try to accomplish what we needed to accomplish. The key factor, as I said, is there's really no destruction and no real compli chance of compli complication.
All right, now basically, um, I'm sure you've seen fibromas, and the one thing I did learn, besides everything else over the last two days, I will ask my patients to show me their hands, because in the past, I'll be honest, I didn't. I would treat my patients, I would do a complete medical history, but it never dawned on me, even though 50% of my patients should be sent to, pay, you know, to people in this room, it just never crossed my mind that I should be doing that, which is kind of silly. Uh, and hopefully you guys will be telling your patients to take their shoes and socks off. I didn't know about washing their feet. I, most of my patients don't need to wash their feet for me to look at their feet. But it would be a good idea for you to examine their feet also. Uh, it's very important to either do an MRI, an ultrasound. You do need to do something to make sure that you're not dealing with a sarcoma or some other type of lesion that could be in the uh, arch of the foot. Now I'm going to take you through a, a, a surgical procedure as uh, I, did, I didn't even think of bringing a video like you just heard. I'm sure it went to work also. But basically this is what a probe looks like. We basically inject the area with some uh, anesthetic. I use a combination of Marcaine, Xylocaine with some Epi to control the bleeding. Scrub the area. It's a very simple surgical tray. There's just really one instrument called a trocar. That's a very important thing uh, that needs to be, and obviously all these are sterilized. Make an incision, it's just a stab incision with a 67 uh, beaver blade. The trocar is then inserted, and basically what you're doing is, this is the fibroma, you're actually needling, which I've heard a lot of in the last few hours, needling the fibroma and opening up the fibroma so that you can get your cryoprobe into it and cause freezing. When you have a fibroma as large as this, I would, this particular patient, I did two freezes here, two freezes distally, and two freezes proximally. Then the cryoprobe is actually inserted into the area. You can see already how much softer the actual lesion has become just from the needling with the trocar. The machine that's an assistant who turns the machine on, you just need somebody to press some buttons and hit a foot pedal uh, while you're doing the procedure. But basically the machine is set for two minutes for fibroma, three minutes for some of the other procedures, depending upon the size of the probe. You do a freeze, you have to wait after the freeze for about, a defrost cycle takes 30 seconds. So for a fibroma, I'm doing a two minute freeze, 30 second defrost, two minute freeze, 30 second defrost. So if you do the math, even if I'm doing 12 freezes on a patient, it's well, that's a half an hour approximately of time. And it can all be done through the same incision site. Then you go through a second, third, as many as you need. When we're done, basically I inject the area with some anti-inflammatory, apply an antibiotic ointment, a sterile compression bandage, and written instructions. Very important, it just has to be kept dry 24 hours. They elevate and put ice on that first day. They can walk out in the same shoe, pretty much, except for most females who they won't be able to accommodate the compression bandage. But they basically can walk out and they're able to uh, ambulate really right away. We, we tell them the first three to five days to minimize activity, but they can go back to work, they can do normal activity in that regard. Within a week, they're back running on a treadmill, any activity they want. Now, some of the uh, research that was done, this was a specific one for plantar fibroma, a new approach to treatment on cryosurgery, and the results alternative to traditional surgery, minimally invasive, less post-op healing, fewer risks of complication. This is a research for neuroma. And basically, I'll summarize it, it's basically saying that it's definitely as successful, if not more successful, than doing traditional neuroma surgery, high patient satisfaction. This is a study that was presented with 2,700 subjects, and it had a 92% success rate. Uh, the last one I think I have up here is on heel pain, and this one had a 90% success rate. I basically, over the course of the years, have t pretty much tell my patients we have about an 85% success rate. Now, what do we mean by 85%? It'll do one procedure, 
and 85% of them will not have to do anything else because they do not have pain anymore. And that's the key factor here, the reduction of pain. The nodule that they've had, in most cases, will shrink in size, it'll become mushier, softer, but the key factor is there's no pain. The pearls that you come out of this, it's minimal risk, ease of treatment, Success rate, depending upon the literature, is anywhere from 80 to 92 percent with just that one treatment. It's certainly much better than any traditional surgery that's out there. Not only more successful, but look at the aftercare. The, set, the patients don't mind if they still have pain, if they have to come back to do a second procedure. And it's just an excellent way of treating fibromas. So to summary, it's an excellent long-term treatment for uh, pain relief. Uh, patients are very receptive to doing this. I've had patients from across the country come to me because they don't want to go through traditional surgery for this type of condition. And it's just one of the uh, you know, latest advancements in the treatment for this condition. I threw my website up there just in case anybody wants more information on it. And again, thank you very much for inviting me.